Hey, g'day everyone. This is going to be Confessions of a Hoarder, Part 2. Last week, for the very first time, I showed you some of my um, sheds and the mess of my hoard that I collect. And um, as I said, this is the very first time I've shown anyone. I usually try and hide it, um, but it's something I want to share with people and I want to try and work through it and get somewhere with it. So I'm hoping we can do that together and I want to um, just share it with everyone in case other people are going through the same thing or maybe give people an insight into a little bit of the justifications and the way um, I think about how things pile up and get collected. Now this week I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is the laundry, which I never showed last week, was absolutely full of stuff as well and it made it really hard for Colette to get in there and do washing or anything really. Um, and it has been cleaned out before, last year. Um, so it's managed to get full again of stuff that I can't fit in the sheds. And the good news is it's all been cleaned out and the laundry looks great compared to what it was. But the bad news is it's all outside on tables and I have to clean it up now. So Colette's going to help me sort through it and I'm going to show you just how much came out of a tiny little laundry room. Let's have a look. Okay, so yesterday Colette, Fisher and Farron all got in here and helped clean out the laundry and got all that stuff out of this little room. Have a look in here. These shelves were probably the worst. They were all stacked to the top of each one with stuff. And even the bathtub was full of stuff. There was even a chook sitting in the bathtub on eggs. Um, because there was all blankets and cloths and stuff inside the tub, um, a chook had laid eggs in there and was sitting on them. That's just an old... I, I really love big baths. And um, the only place I could get a big old cast iron bath was out of a horse paddy. So I brought it home, high pressure hosed it, cleaned it up and just put it on cinder blocks. So this is down in the laundry. And I fill it with this hose here. Just a little home contraption so I can have a nice big deep bath. So the idea is we're going to try and paint this up a little bit and make it a nice relaxing room. That was always what was intended but... All the junk and everything kept getting in the way, so now we're going to try and do it properly. So Colette and the boys helped heaps yesterday, they did most of it. I actually just came in and cleaned up afterwards, they threw everything out for me. Okay, so the plan today is to get rid of everything on the tables, and then we might even come back here and pretty it up a bit more. I'm just going to do little instalments like this, so in another few days I'll probably do Confessions of a Hoarder Part 3, and we might tackle another area. There's quite a few areas out here that need doing, and this was one of them. So, wish me luck on sorting this stuff out. Colette's going to help me, and hopefully most of it gets organised, and some of it goes in the rubbish, and maybe a couple of things to sell. But we'll work on that now. And someone told me in the comments last week, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So, I'm ready to eat. Let's go. We're certainly getting there, just about done. We're definitely on the home straight anyway. Um, a lot of it got thrown into the back of the ute for rubbish, the truck, and that'll just get taken and dumped or burnt. Um, some of it has gone into the sheds that will have to get sorted out later on, so I'm shuffling it a little bit and moving it on to the next problem, across that bridge when I come to it. And some of it has gone put aside to sell. So we're sticking to plan. It's really good that I've got Colette helping me. Um, helps me overcome those little struggles that I have of actually getting rid of stuff. She keeps me moving rather than dwelling on it too much. And I am getting better at saying, just throw it. So that's speeding things up a lot, just that one little phrase, just throw it. Okay, there's a few things here I'm not real sure on. I've got 
three big internal uh, external filters. I've got three big external filters for fish tanks that I was hoping to sort out or work or have for spare parts. But I know in myself that's where I come unstuck if I start saving too many things thinking I'll fix them when I never do. Uh, so I think for now I'll just move them up with the fish stuff and when I get to the actual fish room I'll get serious with them. So today's just about cleaning up more than actually sorting everything because we got so much done yesterday and today's nearly cleaned up so I'll stick to plan and just shuffle it I think. What have we got in here? Old newspaper usually means treasures. light bulbs. That's for that big string of party lights up the end. They all go in there. I'll probably set them up for Christmas so I won't put them too far away. Where'd it go? There. So yeah, they're all different colours. Greens, red, blues, pinks. Yellows. Okay, that's what that is. What have we got in here? Tent poles. Um, I think I saw the tent for that in the shed when I started cleaning up that end bay the other day. A lot of this is like playing match it up. <laughs> match the items. Okay. I'll throw that in the shed. I won't put that too far away. This spear gun needs a new rubber. Once I get a new rubber, it's all working. I was just going to sell it as is, and the boy said, no, buy a rubber. So I might hang on to it, see how much rubbers are. If rubbers are only cheap, I'll buy one. Old jaff line for camping. Put your sandwich with meat in it in there and cheese. Close it up, sit on the campfire, open it up, toasted sangers, jaffles, mm-mm, beautiful. Hey, have a look how old these are. These are the old Edison record reels. Hasn't got one left in it. But they were just a tube made out of um, like a real thick vinyl, almost like the old records, or the 74 records, 74 inch play. And they came in there and you would slot them in and it would turn on a cylinder. But, um, Edison Records. <coughs> Thomas Edison, registered US patent 1903. So they're over 100 year old, those ones. Another bulb. External fish pumps, three of them down there. Colette's giving me that look. I'm getting excited saying, showing you what I've got, and Colette's just like shaking her head. All right. <laughs> A horse rug. An old wooden toolbox. Have a look at these gorgeous little medicine cabinets. Cute are they? Tiny little mirror. Democrat shaving cream glass jar. Insulator off a power line. Oh, it's still got some in it. blowtorch. That is brass. They polish up beautifully. That real 
golden brown brass colour. That bit there is about as good as it will get. But you can polish that whole lot up and they come up really nice. They're worth a few bucks. Cleaned up, that's probably worth about 30 bucks. This is for starting the old gas stoves. Had a little flint down there, it's got a, a flint wheel. You slip your flint down that little tunnel there and it goes down and hits the wheel. And then when you pull that it just lets off a spark and it used to light your old gas stoves for you. I love them old things that had a purpose. Tin. Old tin. Polyolaester. Compressor oil. All this stuff in here is to sell. I'll end up selling that at the next um, yard sale or markets that I go to. Old rope, a few little bits and pieces in there. Um, but yeah, that's just collectible stuff that I'll sell. That stuff usually sells pretty quick because there's a lot of guys out there like me that collect old rustic crap. I mean, beautiful old treasures. Rusty gold, as the American pickers would say. Rusty gold. Um, that's a little wooden carry case for my chainsaw stuff. That's about it. What have we got here? A little tackle box. Some of it's a bit rusty. That makes perfect sense that that was in the laundry. Because um, most people have tackle boxes in their laundry, don't they? Isn't that where you keep them? Anyway, I'll get to it. See you again soon when it's done. Now, all the tables are clear. Underneath the tables are clear. The laundry's still clean. It didn't go back in there. Some of it did go in the sheds, which I'm a bit disappointed about, but we have to get to them next. And then I've also got stuff on the back of the truck there. That'll just go straight to the dump. So, stuff to dump, some stuff organised and put into boxes and packed into the shed, and laundry still clean, so that's one more step into cleaning up and overcoming some of these piles and piles of collectibles, or things that I somehow value in my head that I put sentimental value to, or put some sort of financial price on that I think I can make money on down the track all these excuses and justifications that I come up with in my own mind to hang on to it um, it's probably a, a little bit hard for some people to understand they just look at it and see rubbish or stuff that should just be thrown away um, but the real battle goes on inside my head where people can't see and that's where I form attachments to it and have these funny little connections to everything and want to keep it and hoard it and stack it and hide it and um, either keep it for a rainy day to sell or pack it away to enjoy down the track. And um, when I look at it logically, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's how it goes. So thanks for joining me. Really appreciate you taking a step inside our little world and inside my head. If you like these sort of videos, make sure you hit the bell for notification. I'll be doing a few more over the next coming weeks as I try to tackle the sheds and all my other piles of um, rubbish. Well, it's not rubbish, there's treasures amongst it too. We'll say, um, what do we call it? My precious. My precious. My precious. <laughs> As I try and part with some of it, dump it, organise it, and clean up and try and get my head back in order and my yard as well. So if you want to see more of that sort of stuff, keep an eye out for Confessions of a Hoarder. And I'll try and bring you a few more. Hit the bell for notifications. Leave a message. I'd love to hear what you think. If anyone's similar or can relate in any way, I love hearing that. It makes me feel like I'm not alone. And if you can't understand it, maybe you want me to explain something a bit more, just leave a comment and I'm happy to get back to people. So leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you take time for the simple joys. Bye, everyone.